This program enhancing observational skills was started at Yale University approximately 10 years ago and it is a very unique collaboration between two Yale institutions. One is the Yale School of Medicine and the other is the Yale Center for British Art. It has been imitated now by at least 20 medical schools across the country. I was running this conference and I asked the residents to describe their cases and they weren't doing a very good job. I was wondering how could I get them to do this better? And at that moment, a painting popped into my head as being something that would be foreign to most of the residents. They would probably describe everything in that object because they didn't know what was important or unimportant. The two of us then thought about what we could do together, uh, if indeed we could, uh, in terms of trying to offer a program that could enhance medical students' observational skills. And that really is the genesis of the program. We selected pictures that had a narrative, that is that there was an implicit story within the work of art itself. And it's this 19th century art, these Victorian paintings that really are so helpful for us in that they really behave like surrogates for patients. Students come in groups of 20 to the museum. There are five of us we split the group up into groups of four. We take the four students up into the galleries. I assign my four students pre-selected paintings, as does all the other group leaders. The students are given approximately 12 to 15 minutes to study the painting. The instructions are don't read the label, because the label sometimes will, it has information that we want you to get for yourself. And we want you to study this painting and describe it in a way that if someone is listening but doesn't see the painting, they'll get a mental image of it. The young man appears to um, have uh, fallen into bed. He's uh, still wearing much of his clothes, although he has draped a coat over a chair in his room. They then spend the next 15, 20 minutes talking and describing what they see. Secondly, like their, the way, what the, you know, the direction of their eyes is completely separate from the, the rest of the people in the image. Where and then when you're all done, then you can put that information together into some hypothesis or hypotheses as to what you think this is all about. Something happened to him the previous night yeah. uh, that caused him to uh, perhaps read love letters that he had kept in a chest. Okay. And then if you can narrow it down by looking back into the painting for getting corroborating information, do that. And then when it's all done, we will tell you what this is about, or as much as we know what it's about. So that's why he was put in this position, because of the notoriety associated with him. Yeah. That he was a genius who wasn't recognized. After they have given a complete visual inventory of the painting, the rest of the group is asked if anything was left out. Sometimes, interestingly enough, the, the elephant in the middle of the room is not addressed. And I will say to them, would you like to say something about the person in the middle of the painting? And they're going back and forth about what this painting is all about and what they have seen. And what we realized, didn't realize in the beginning, but realized afterwards, we've actually taught them something about teamwork, what it means to communicate with one another over some issue. In the follow-up activity, where students are given enlarged 8x10 color photographs of skin lesions, they are given, I think, 10 of them. They are timed and given a certain amount of time with each photograph, and they need to write down specifically what it is that they see. And after we get to about number 9 or 10, the obvious things have been said, and now they're really searching for something different. And in that search for something different, they begin to see things they ordinarily would have passed over. Okay, what about his lip? It's kind of like on towards one side. Well, it's deviated toward his what? Towards his right side. Right side. And there was just this wonderful um, kind of togetherness in terms of their post-testing of the experience that they had had in the galleries. And this is one of the things that really distinguishes Yale's program is that it really centers on increasing observational skills. So as I tell the students, you've got two jobs. One is to recognize those signs and symptoms that we teach you about 
that we know are true, but also to find new ones that we haven't taught you about, that we don't know about, so you can advance medicine. Once they have this experience, then they know what it means to look for details. Analyzing a painting, what is there, that's all. Because once you do that, then you can analyze anything. Being a doctor is all about uh, seeing everything that's in front of you. Uh, and not just seeing it, but, but really looking and watching and observing. And um, to be a better observer is to be a better doctor. Um, and, I, and I think the, the very much proved, this session very much proved that for me today.